find Michael, great competitor. He was always good, but he keeps getting better, and I can't wait to see what happens with the match. Good luck to him. And, uh, yeah. Hello, Brian. How you doing? What, why, why are you here in my match? Well, I'm here in your match because I'm going to be managing you today, Brian, as the manager of Club Dread. I mean, why are you wearing that Hawaiian shirt, acting like you don't know? Oh, I guess I have to join the faction somewhere in Hawaiian shirts now, right? Yeah. I mean, that's oh. why that's why we came to you. I saw you wearing it, and I was like, oh, you should probably join. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. Work, works for me. Yeah. Well, I just want to say really quick, uh, Dustin is a very good player, a very strong player, but you are a excellent player, and I have full confidence in you. Uh, we're going to pick up a win today, uh, and you can't lose in a shirt like that. That's really all I have to say. I mean, what about you? How are you feeling, Brian? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, Dustin's one of those guys who kind of been hanging around just like me in the same level in these in these war zone tournaments. We always make it to like round two, round three uh, before we get knocked out, but we've never been able to face each other. So I'm, I'm excited to finally face him. We'll, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Very excited. Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex Movie Warzone. I'm your ho. Ah! Get away. Anyway, no Hawaiian shirts allowed. Anyway. I'm your host, Kayla Little Boat Boatman, and today we actually have a really good match. Uh, this is Dustin the Duster Mason going up against Brian the McGuffin Michael. Should be an interesting matchup. On the desk, I have fellow Kingsman, Cameron the Conductor Holzman. Cameron, how do you feel about this matchup? Uh, I feel this is going to be an interesting one. Like like it was said, uh, these two have both played in tournaments and have done really well, but have never managed to get far enough to face each other. Uh, Brian's last match, I believe, uh, was when he lost in that incredible sudden death round to Menchaca. Uh, Dustin's last match was beating Menchaca's manager, Cody. So, who knows what's going to happen? You had to stop talking right when I took a bite. <laughs> Absolutely. So, without further ado, let's bring everybody in. Introducing first... Coming into the ring with a record of five wins, four defeats, representing Light It Up. It is Dustin the Duster Mason. Yeah. And coming into the ring second with a record of eight wins, four defeats, representing Wild Stallions and now Club Dread. It is Brian McGuffin Michaels. Okay, so gentlemen, you know, all know how round one works. Eight different questions, eight different categories. You get all eight right, you get a bonus question. Um, three repeats and a challenge throughout the entire match. Please remember to keep hands on screen at all times. So, without further ado, first question, recent releases. Who portrays the title character in Sonic the Hedgehog? Caleb Coho, like two months ago. You're not wrong. Because it's, it's an original joke. No one made no, it. No, it isn't. Five. Very original joke. It's original Four. because I Three. made it, and I'm the most original Three. man alive. One. That's why my nickname is Ken. Down. Let's go to Dustin. Ben Schwartz. And Brian. Uh, also Ben Schwartz. Also yeah. Ben Schwartz or Ben Schwartz is acceptable. Um, All right, everyone. Question number two is in the category of classics. And your question is, what country does Dr. Zhivago take place in? Dr. Zhivago, of course, being a pediatrician, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Zhivago? Jamaica? <laughs> what? No, you don't. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, let's go to Brian. I've not seen it, but I'm going to say Russia. And let's go to Dustin. I also said Russia. Both correct, Ra Ra Rasputin. Should we go into your next question, which comes in the category of directors. What was the directorial debut of David Lynch? David Lynch, that guy who directed such classic films as Redacted. I'm not allowed to say because it could give away the answer. And uh, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. <laughs> One pens down. Let's go to Brian. Eraserhead and Dustin. I also put Eraserhead. Both correct. We are having way more fun than everyone else. Here. <laughs> As we move into your next game question, camera. All right. Uh, your fourth question is in the category of sci-fi fantasy. Name all three years that Marty McFly travels to in Back to the Future Part Two. 
being very specific about the fact that it is part two, ha ha ha, reference to the longest night of my life. Please don't <laughs> say that. I'm going to get angry messages again. <laughs> Five, four, three, part. two, one, pens down, let's put it down. I said 1955, 1995, and 2015. And Brian. I have 55, 85, and 15. That is correct. Okay, your fifth question comes in the category of scores and soundtracks. What song do Mia and Vincent dance to in the twist contest in Pulp Fiction? You know, the crazy thing about the scene, Caleb, is that you're in it dressed as Buddy Holly. <laughs> you are not wrong. You are not wrong. Which proves everyone's theory that Five, despite looking four, 12, you're actually eight, 112. Two. Like the Avatar. Repeat. Okay, Brian, using his first repeat, your question category of scores and soundtracks. What song do Mia and Vincent dance to in the twist contest in Pulp Fiction? I, I use my only joke. I don't know what to say now. Um, I said you look like Steve Buscemi. It doesn't get any better than that. So, yeah. what's the point? Five, four, three, two, one. I don't tip. Let's go to Dustin. Was it uh, You Never Can Tell? And Brian. I hope so, because that's what I put. You Never Can Tell? Both correct. I had to sing half the song in my head. To <laughs> <laughs> All right, your. Question number six comes in the category of romance slash romantic comedies, and it's fitting that I asked this question considering a joke I made earlier in this match. What is the full name of Kristen Stewart's character in the Twilight franchise? Of course, a franchise with all five films being directed by David Lynch. Except for except for Eclipse. That was actually James Cameron. Yeah, the, the underwater sex scene kind of lost me, but overall, it didn't. I was, I was legitimately talking about these movies with my friends earlier, and there's a scene in the second oh. one where, where the character Three. just jumps off a cliff because she's sad. Pen down. Let's go to Brian. Bella Lugosi. <laughs> and up. Wow, I got Bella Swan. That is correct. Uh, you have tied at five to five. Yeah. Brian, Bella in our heart. Might have been a better movie, let's be honest. <laughs> I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know. So Probably would have been a better movie. Uh, your pen ultimate question comes in the category of horror films. In what horror franchise will you find the character of Beverly Marsh? Ah, uh, horror. That genre that me and Caleb Bowman love. You said what franchise, correct? Yes. Four. With we love such Three. classic horror films as Two. Max Key. Oh. Okay. Dustin using his first repeat. In what horror franchise will you find the character of Beverly Marsh? Of course, we love the classic horror films like 1926's Max Keeble's Big Move. And the hey. best picture winning horror film, Max Keeble's Big Move 2. <laughs> Five. The move is even bigger. <laughs> Three, two, one. No one is amused but me, Cameron. Let's go to Jeff. Halloween. And Brian. I'd be amused, except I couldn't really hear much more. It. It <laughs> is correct. Yep. And your answer is correct, too. Uh, ha! Ha. Uh, all right, gentlemen, and your final question, as there are no perfect rounds, is in the category of Oscars. What was the only category for which the Big Short won an Oscar? Opposite of big, little. Opposite of short, boat. How do you feel that this movie ripped you off? I feel good because I enjoy this film. That's fair. Even though it's directed by Hollywood hack Adam McKay, as one Three, Cameron Redshaw would say. Two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Brian. Adapted screenplay? And Dustin. Best adapted screenplay. We will accept both. 
We do not need that. It was the best. We just assume. I know. I, the Oscars do not award mediocrity. <laughs> I mean, Green Book. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> okay. As we go into round two, the score is seven to six. Uh, with Brian in the slight lead, if I'm not mistaken. So round two, going to work like this. Ten different categories on our lovely wheel from wheeldecide.com. You're just going to get a chance to spin the wheel. If you like what you spin, you can keep. If you don't, you can spin again, but then you are stuck with it. The categories that we have on our wheel tonight are 90s Marissa Tomei comedies and 90s actor-actress filmography, which is Brian because, of course, because that's the only stuff we can live. Uh, and then we have basketball movies and Paul Rudd for Dustin. Then also coming of age slash teen, war, mystery thriller, and horror. So, uh, Brian, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin for a uh, So, Brian, I, I, I'm thinking, what were you going to say? You were going to say usually. I usually prefer to go second. I was about to say you should probably do that anyway. I mean, that was a great first round. And I think we'll that, second. yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we like to see what numbers we're up at with. Okay. Yeah. So. We will start with Dustin's spin. Dustin, this is your spin. And it lands on the category of Paul Rudd. Would you like I'll to do it? Okay. Cameron, would you like to give Dustin his questions on the category of Paul Rudd? There is nothing that would make me personally happier than to do that right now. Okay. Except for maybe like cash, but. Uh, there. Dustin, your first question in the category of Paul Rudd movies. In Clueless, Cher impresses Josh with her knowledge of what Shakespeare play. I'll go multiple choice on that. All right, your multiple choice options are A, Romeo and Juliet, B, The Tempest, C, A Midsummer Night's Dream, or D, Hamlet. I'll go The Tempest. That is incorrect, Brian, for the one point steal. Your options, once again, are A, Romeo and Juliet, B, The Tempest. C, A Midsummer Night's Dream, or D, Hamlet? Hamlet. That is correct for a point. Also, someone in the document spelled knight like with a K, and that bothers me. Uh, your next question in the category of Paul Rudd, Dustin. In I Love You, Man, Peter and Sidney share a love of what rock band? Rush. That is correct for two points. One of the greatest Canadian bands of all time. Question number three in Paul Rudd. In The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie and his friends appear in a production of what musical? Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. That is correct for two points. Yep. Your fourth question. In Ant-Man... Scott mocks Luis before the heist by referencing what TV show? Multiple choice, please. Your options are A, Mama's Family, B, The Andy Griffith Show, C, I Love Lucy, or D, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Oof. I guess I'll go D, Dick Van Dyke. That is incorrect, Brian, for the one-point steal. Your options, once again, are A, Mama's Family, B, The Andy Griffith Show, C, I Love Lucy, or D, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Mama's Family. That is also incorrect. The answer is The Andy Griffith Show, because Kayla Boatman wrote this question. <laughs> <laughs> You're not incorrect. And your final question in the category of Paul Rudd, who directed The Cider House Rules? you got to have multiple choice on that. I think I know it, but I don't want to butcher the name. Right. Your options are A, Anthony Minghella, B, James Ivory, C, Lassie Hallstrom, or D, yeah. Gus Van Sant. It's Lassie Hallstrom. And that would be correct for one point. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, Dustin is at 11, uh, getting five points in that round, and Brian is at eight. Is that what you have, Sam? That is what I have. Okay. We go over to Brian's spin. Bring Ethan back in. Hey, that one. 
Your first spin is mystery thriller. Would you like to keep that or spin again? So, I mean, I definitely don't think that's bad for you at all, but I know there's just a little bit, you know, there's some things that you like more. How are you feeling about that? There's not really any on there that I'm scared of, at least not more than mystery. I mean, mystery thriller is one of my strongest ones, but it's nothing that I think that's worse. So I'd yeah. like to try and spin and get something. Better. Yeah, you also have a, a good lead right now, so I think it's okay to, to take that risk. All right. Well, I'm not in the lead, but I'm sorry. I'm not in the lead. Sorry. I knew what you meant. You know what I mean? um, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll spin again. Category of horror. Okay. All right. And I will give you your questions in the category of horror. What type of store are the characters trapped in in the mist? grocery store. That is correct for two points. Best ending ever. It is a really good ending. In the original Nightmare on Elm Street, Nancy realized that she can bring in objects from her dream to the real world when she does it with what object? I think I know, but I want to go multiple choice. A, a diary. B, a knife. C, Freddy's hat. D, a key. Freddy's hat. That is correct. Okay, your third question in the category of horror. What 1960 film centers around a group of glowed, glowing eyed... I'll start that over. What 1960 film centers around a group of glowing eyed children of an uncertain paternity who begin to terrorize the village of Midwich. Village of the Damned. That is correct. And your penultimate question, category four, what is the name of the last misery novel that makes Annie go crazy in misery? I'm gonna be multiple choice on that one. A, Misery Lives. B, Misery Rises. C, Misery's Baby. D, Misery's End. Misery's End. That is incorrect, Dustin, for the one-point steal. Your options are A, Misery Lives. B, Misery Rises. C, Misery's Baby. D, Misery's End. Misery's Baby? That is correct for one point. Nice. Big one point steal. Total yes. As we go into your final question, who plays John Russell? Sorry, who plays John Russell in The Changeling? Do multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A. Gregory Peck, B. George C. Scott, C. Vincent Price. E. John Cassavetes. A. A is incorrect. Dustin, your multiple choice options are A. Gregory Peck, B. George P. Scott, C. Vincent Price, D. John Cassavetes. I'm sorry, one more time. Have you cut out on the A. Gregory Peck. B. George C. Scott, C. Vincent Price, D. John Cassavetes. A. A is also incorrect, looking for B. George C. Scott. I thought he said B. Never mind. Okay. He said A. Oh. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, it is 13 to 12 as we go with Brian in the lead as we go into round three. That you have cameras. That is what I have. Okay, a pretty close game as we go into round three. The categories are competitors will to pick what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four pointer from are Steven Spielberg, Crime, 2010s, Oscars, Sports, Sci-Fi Fantasy, Home of Age Slash Team, and Action Adventure. So we will let them pick their categories right now. We'll get back to you right now. Okay, we are back, and our competitors have picked what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four pointer. Dustin picked his one and four to the beginning of eight slash team. Green Crime is four and 2010s. 
First, Brian Inspector's one coming of age section, two in Spielberg, three in 2010s, and four in Action Adventure. So, uh, since I gave Brian his questions in round two, Cameron, would you like to give Brian his in round three, and I will give Dustin his? Provided, yeah. Brian, you can hear Cameron now. Right. Talk, Cameron. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Cool. Oh, okay. Goody, goody. Okay. Dustin, your one pointer in sports. Who plays the title character in Happy Gilmore? Adam Sandler. That is correct. All right. So we move over to Brian for his one point question in the category of coming of age. Ryan, your one-point question. Who directed Lady Bird? Lady Bird? Oh, that's uh, Credit Gerwig. That is correct for one point. My head went to Lady Hawk. I almost screwed it up. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. As we go into Dustin's two-pointer in the category of coming of slash team. Mm-hmm. What 1993 film takes place on the last day of school in 1976? Days of Confused. That is right. All right, so we come back to Brian for two points in the category of Steven Spielberg. Brian, your question is, in Hook, who is the leader of the Lost Boys while Peter had disappeared? Stay with me now. Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. Zuko from Avatar. <laughs> that, I mean, also true. Dante Basco. That's correct, right. by the way. Uh, <laughs> We're flipping right back to Dustin for your three pointer in crime. What is the name given to the high roller played by Michael Sarah in Molly's game? Player X. That is true. With no hesitation. All okay. right, and we bounce right back to Brian with a three-pointer in the category of the 2010s. Who plays Jasmine's stepson in Blue Jasmine? Yeah, I know I'm busy right now. Can you leave me alone? Um, Ansel Elgort. I don't know. Uh, that is incorrect. We would not ask questions about that man nowadays. The answer is Alden Ehrenreich. Yep. Kind of close in terms of name, but uh, which means we stick with Brian for his four point question in the category of action adventure. Uh, Brian, you still have two repeats if you would like to use them. Your question is Name three of the stalkers. In The Running Man. Just watched that too long ago. Four. Three. Two. One. Repeat. All right, Brian's second repeat. He's got one left. Name three of the stalkers in The Running Man. Five, four, three, two. Last repeat. All right, that is your final repeat. Brian, your question. Name three of the stalkers in The Running Man. Five, four, three, two. I've only got one. Congratulations, Dustin. And your winner! Dustin the Duster Mason. Uh, we would have accepted Professor Sub Zero, Dynamo, Fireball, Buzzsaw, or Captain Freedom. So, uh, we will go to my interviews 
we will start with uh, our unfortunate uh, second place finisher tonight, Brian. Brian, you played a really good game. You kept it in your round three. Just your three and four pointer didn't go your way. How are you feeling? Um, well, disappointed, of course. I mean, I uh, especially Running Man. I watched maybe a month ago, but I just I was blanking out. I had like parts of all of their names, but couldn't come up with full names for any of them except for one. Um, yeah, I, I'm it sucks that I'm kind of the first so Warzone loss for uh, for uh, Club Dread. So a little disappointing there, but um, I mean, it's it's not that I, I don't feel I played badly. I think Dustin just played a great game. Um, even if I had gotten that one, he still had a four point, which he could have gotten and still won the game. So uh, you know, had fun, playing great. Um, I'm going to be happy that I'm kind of probably going to be on a good break here for singles for a little while, which I'll be happy with because I've been playing a lot of matches. So uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say like Brian obviously played a great game. Dustin played a a better game you know that happens it was a good game um not disappointed at all this is the first <laughs> singles war zone loss for us because we i'm still like thrilled to have brian with us and like he's gonna have many wins coming in for us and he's got team stuff coming up so you know it was just like a matter of someone playing a slightly better game and that's fine because he, he's it's brian everyone knows that everyone everyone's afraid when they get put in a match with him so i'm not worried at all fair enough so we will now go over to our winner tonight Dustin, the Duster Mason, kind of getting back on a win streak after a little bit uh, last season and the tournament here. You're kind of getting to rack up those wins again. How do you feel? Surprise. Uh, I just want to say I didn't think I was going to win this match. I thought Brian was just on an incredible hot streak. He was He played a phenomenal game, and his last question was difficult. I didn't know any of that, so... The fact that he had one name, is God bless him, like in his head. So I for that question. So nothing. He played a better game than me personally. I think this. I, I think I was a little off in round two, but uh, I and I, I definitely missed a couple questions throughout the game that I wish I hadn't. But either in that, great game. Uh, I'm glad to be on a winning streak again, and uh, I just want to thank Cody for letting me get this match. So cool. Okay. So. Uh, now, next up, you are playing another Club Dread member, Kirk the Consigliere Kawakowski. How do you feel about that? Kirk's a great player, too, and he keeps getting better. So I'm just having fun, dude. Tonight was fun. So hell yeah. I, I can't wait. Good luck to Kirk. Okay. And so back to Cam at the desk. Final thoughts on the match? Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a really great match. It was close all throughout. Uh, end of round one, Brian had a one-point lead. And around two, Brian had a one-point lead, and it just came down to that three-pointer and that four-pointer. And when I read the four-pointer, I thought that was something Brian might have known. It's the 80s, and fortunately, it just doesn't turn out his way. And now Dustin moves on to try and continue taking out the newly formed Club Dread, and we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. So from Ethan, from Brian... From Dustin and from Cameron, I'm your host, Cable of Bob Altman. This has been Multiplex Movie Warzone. Bye bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye!